Cancer is one of the most prevalent and devastating diseases humanity has ever faced and is one we continue to struggle with today. And see, cancer isn't actually just one disease, it's more of an umbrella. And there are many different types of cancers that have different essential mechanisms. We still have so much more to understand about the way different cancers grow and especially how they spread. But scientists at Lawrence Livermore and our industry and university partners have now paired 3D bioprinting and computer modeling to take us one step further. One of the scarier things that can happen with a cancer diagnosis is called metastasis. That means that the cancer cells have spread from their place of origin to a new place. And our body's network of blood vessels is called our vasculature. And one of the main ways cancer can spread is that the cancer cells are transported away from the original tumor through your bloodstream, where they eventually attach to a vessel wall. From here, the cancer cells pass through that blood vessel wall into the tissue where they grow kind of like a seed in soil, usually in areas like forks in those blood vessels. And while we have figured out a lot about how some of this process works, we still actually know very little about especially how physics plays into it. Like the flow of blood through a vessel is a three-dimensional process, one that's been very difficult to replicate in a lab setting until now. Think about it. When we analyze the way a fluid moves through a biological material, we have to consider a bunch of things like the rate of flow and other fluid dynamics, the geometry of that vasculature, and how all of this affects the spread of cancer cells, which have their own physics to consider, like shape, elasticity, etc. And replicating, and more specifically, measuring all of this in a lab setting is really tricky. But Monica Moya and her team here at LLNL have found a great way to explore it. They are 3D printing vasculature. That's 3D printing like this, but instead of plastic, they're printing with live cells, actual human tissue called endothelial cerebral cells. That means these are the cells that line the blood vessels in your brain. These cells are printed into a device that forms them into channels where they can simulate the formation of blood vessels and then we can introduce fluid flow. And if that wasn't cool enough, the researchers can then add breast cancer cells to this cell-seated device to see where the tumor cells go and how and when they attach to vessel walls. This is a 3D printed vasculature system that you have complete control over. It's totally wild. But that's not all, because the team then compared their data about the cancer cells and their behavior within this environment to a computational model. See, lifelike lab bench versions of biological processes like these are called in vitro models, while the computer version is called an in silico model, which I think is pretty funny. And a computational modeling team at Duke University integrated LLNL's in vitro data into their computer model of this process, just to make sure we have the most accurate and up-to-date biological measurements to work with in that computer model. And with the computer model, we can see levels of detail that we just can't in the in vitro model. And plus, an in silico model allows you to turn variables on and off. Things like the elasticity of the cells or certain aspects of the fluid flow, and then see what happens in response to those changes. That's not very easy or fast to do in a lab setting. The researchers think this combination in vitro in silico approach could help them separate what parts of the metastatic seeding process for cancer cells are more biologically influenced versus physically influenced, which could eventually help us predict how and where tumors will spread, which in turn can enable targeted screening of high-risk patients and therapeutic intervention aimed at the most vulnerable areas of the body. This exciting interdisciplinary approach can be useful for all sorts of other investigations too, like finding out how some surgical interventions might work in response to brain aneurysms, or simulating how blood clotting might respond to aneurysm treatment. The possibilities are kind of endless and are endlessly exciting. If this video blew your mind, then make sure you hit that like button. And if you enjoyed this one, then subscribe to our channel for more peeks inside the lab every month. And check out the whole playlist here. 
If you have questions about this work or other work we do, then leave them for us in the comments. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.